Ricky Cash and Laurie Kilmartin. We are recording. Hello. Hello, Jacqueline. You are back from Minneapolis. I know a full week where which meant that I got to hang out with easily almost everyone. <laughs> almost everyone. Like I got to hang out with Liz Winstead and Mary Jo Peel. I never get to hang out with those. Wow, guys. that's cool. Um, but also Kylie yeah. was opening for you, Brian Kylie. Brian Kylie and Anna Valenzuela. There was a drama because uh not a, there was no drama. It was just it was a drama in my mind because I had to keep switching. Because I I asked Carmen Morales if she wanted a feature. Mm-hmm. She said yes. And then I was gonna just gonna have Lewis at Acme in Minneapolis pick the MC. And then Carmen got a headline week. And so I asked Anna Valenzuela if she wanted a feature. And then Carmen called me and said that her headline week had fallen through. Oh. And I asked Anna Valenzuela if they would if she would be willing to and, and Carmen if they wanted to split it, do twenties. And so Anna was like, sure. <laughs> and Carmen was like, sure. And then Carmen got a headline. <laughs> oh, God. And then in the interim, Brian Kiley, well, it was Mary Jo Peel, Brian Kiley, Alice Wetterland Ooh. had all asked if they had told me they were going to be in town that week. But in that order. So I asked Mary Jo Peel if she was willing to split the week, uh, you know, flip flopping with Anna and Mary Jo's she's like, my act is not conducive. I'm so sorry. And so she couldn't do it. And I asked Kylie and Kylie said, yes. So Alice Wetterland next on the list. Uh, the next time I bring anybody on the road, I guess. Uh, and she happens to be in town because it pays. So Jackie, cool. it's too confusing. Right. Right. That's somebody asked me, they said, do you get to pick your features? And I was like, you can, but then you have to help and orchestrate. And I can't make their lives slightly easier and my life is already yeah. um, so i i i want to try but uh i don't know that i have the energy to well, try like, as much as other people. this is another thing that's fallen to the comics that used to be the club responsibility you know and the club's willing to do it it's fine yeah but um but it is and it is fun to travel with someone it was so fun to travel uh with kylie and uh <laughs> And Valenzuela. Uh, so Anna and Brian and I, uh, the first day, I had lunch with uh, Tommy Ryman, Mary Mack, Tim Harmston. Jesus. Uh, and a couple of the locals, yeah. right? Uh, so it was like um, Trevor Anderson and Pearl Rose and Lucy Zarns and Tommy. And, and, and there was just like so many of us, but Brian yeah. hadn't landed yet. The next day, uh, we had lunch again, and that was with... Uh, Mary Mack and Tim Armston and Brian and um, you know I had a vegan it wasn't vegan but I had a uh, a tempeh Reuben that they put cheddar on it Lori and I know that as a non foodie you could give a shit but let me just I'm say just horrified by all the people you spend time with it's not the people it's the amount of them that already has me running to a closet to shut myself oh my god and it just continues, oh. quite honestly. And then the next day, I uh, I think it was just Anna, myself, Brian, and Matt Alano, who was doing Goonies yeah. in Rochester. Okay. And so we had lunch with him at a Native American breakfast joint, which uh, Jackie Cash and Nostradamus, uh, it turns out, there's Native American restaurants, several, there's trucks and restaurants all over Minneapolis, because Minneapolis has the largest urban Native American population oh, in the United States. I didn't States. know that. Yeah. Well. And the shows went really well, and those guys were super funny. Yes. And it was very funny when Brian would host, and then Anna would go up next, and Anna would say, <laughs> I have a very different energy. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, let's have a big round of applause for Brian Kiley. I have a, I have a very different energy. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> but it was uh that it was super it was mellow and fun and everybody had good sets and i did the tom bernard show without tom bernard uh asking me to talk about the same hockey thing that he's been asked me to talk about for 25 <laughs> well, years because he's finally retired jackie stop it stop storming out answer his question so we can move on oh he asked it every time <laughs> for 20 years he was like, remember that joke you made about the hockey team? <laughs> and I was like, I don't. I don't remember that because I was riffing on a radio show in 1997. Is that he okay? He still loves that it. I don't remember that. He still loves it. I love it. 
Ah, he loved it with the power of the sun. Um, yeah, and, and I flew in early mm -hmm. because I was doing a weird panel at Hamlin University in St. Paul right. about freedom of speech and cancel culture. And I agreed to do it because they paid for two nights of hotel. And yeah. um, But I did it with Greg Coleman and Tiffany Norton, who are a couple of local comics. Right. As well, and Neil Justin, who writes for the Strib, I complained last week about how he cock blocked me filling the room yes. by calling me too smart. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who wants he doubled to go down, by the way. to see the too smart comedian? Nobody. Okay. They love dumb fucks. So that's how I like to be presented. <laughs> right. I am going to secretly include the letter X or the letter J, and then that will be as smart as it gets. The bar is not too high, my friends. It's going to be fine. Is that a Scrabble so, reference? Probably. <laughs> I got nothing. You're so smart. You don't even know what you're saying anymore. Right. So true. Um, so the, I guess the Hassan thing blew over. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, right? It was so over. important for a day. I was fascinated by people's responses to it, you know, and, and, uh, you know, any hot takes, um, I don't think so. Like some, some comics are like, who fucking care? I mean, honestly, who fucking cares, but I can, you know, there were people that were like that, what he meant said was really important to me so that it wasn't true is like, uh, awesome. yeah, to drag. It's not like, it's not like me saying that there were $3,000 and $2 bills for my mother-in-law when there were actually 2000 <laughs> Because the alliteration of two thousand dollars of two dollar bills, I'm gonna stumble fuck over that sentence yeah. over and no, over you have again. To... So I had to go three grand. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that ended pretty quick. Is it was interesting, you know? Um, and do the what? What do you? What rights do you? What? What expectations are you allowed to have from your favorite comic? You know. Um, right. Right. Uh, I think I did. The anthrax thing just seemed a little, a little much <laughs> to have lied that, that he had had a felony that someone had, you know, threatened his life and is a little bit bigger than other things. Sure. But uh, you know, it is over, you yeah. know, it would be like if I had a thing about like a chunk about being raped, but then you found out that I wasn't raped, but you know, I could have been <laughs> and I, <laughs> right, right, right. And, and, the uh the, the amount of sexual assault that we've all gone through yeah. is enough yeah 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 exactly yeah. and i bet you the amount of racism that hassan has had to deal yes. with is also enough yes i agree i agree it, uh, it's always you can always it's just a, it's a weird yeah it, thing to it could have been tweaked i guess but um you know whatever he i yeah i it's over uh, yeah he's a he's a funny guy he does really well and uh you know i'm sure he'll he'll be okay He'll bounce back. He's also very handsome. <laughs> Jackie, easy. Easy. Down girl. Down girl. <laughs> I know you've been on the Down road for a week and you're horny. And now you have to do podcasts <laughs> instead of jumping your husband's bones. Just calm down, woman. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what the problem was. It's, uh, <laughs> you were, um, why have Jackie, I got in a extensive email back and forth with the publicist for the sham wow guy oh my gosh Why? I, I, I guess you don't check the jackie and Lori gmail i get i get all these pr people who don't they just throw these things out they don't check who they're emailing at all so they're like hey do you want to the sham wow guy wants to talk about cancel culture and how you can't say anything and so i you know i said no and uh absolutely not and i think it's bullshit and i i think i said the guy is this what you dreamed of doing as a little child is uh promoting the careers of guys who defend rapists because it was also when i talked right. about russell brand's troubles it's like uh, what? trouble do you Thank so you. he's obviously doesn't know who we are or what our podcast is or anything so we kept going back and forth and then he looked me up on twitter he's like oh now i know who you are and i'm like well, you should have before you asked, does your client know you're just throwing him on podcasts that, you know, without even doing <laughs> any fucking research. But then I thought, you know, publicists charge a lot. And I hope this guy yeah. is fucking raking sham wow guy over the coals and they just meet yeah. each other anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then sham wow got in my 
my replies and was like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, oh, dude, just stop. You're in no, this. We don't even have guests. No, we don't, we have, don't guests, have guests. And if we do, it's a. Uh, we're not having that. No, guy. no, we're not. Um, so that was, that was a little bit of drama. And then I, I just posted this little story about um, my ID card, my Conan ID card, because I, I, oh, yeah. I was going through stuff and it popped up. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that post. So it's a true thing. I, I, um, so I, I had my ID card. Wait, here's, here's, here it is right here. You can't see it. Maybe, whatever. And so one day at work, I didn't have it. And uh, so I had to go to the security desk and they, they always issue you a new one, right? So right. he's like, he goes, if you, if you do this one more time, I'm banning you from the lot. And I'm like, what? I can't go to work. Are you? What? Conan can do that, but who the fuck are you? No. Yeah. So then I, I go in and I go into the writer's room and it's like a Friday, I think, because everyone was kind of casual. And I'm like, the security guy just said he was not going to let me in the lot if I ever lost my ID again. <laughs> and the whole room's like, what the fuck? And they were all like ready to fight this guy. And then someone goes, right. how many times have you lost your ID? And I said, 17 times. <laughs> and then they all started laughing. Yes, laughing. because like, you are no longer the victim. Yeah. Yes. So I tweeted that. And at the moment, it has over 2 million views. <laughs> I don't know why. it ha And a berserk amount of quote tweets and people going, people either deciding that I'm exactly like them or that there's, oh, look, there's someone worse than me. That's that, that contingent. <laughs> and then there's other people going, what the fuck is wrong with you? You should have been fired like five IDs ago. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they, went on. they had a number. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Yeah. It's, um, wow. Uh, yeah. When, when I read that story where it was 17, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that's where it, it does all fall apart. No, you it doesn't. Don't. It's over the course of nine years. That's like one every six months. That's not bad. And by the way, I would find what, every six months. What? Are, have you ever found old ones? Yeah. And they won't let you rekey it. Like I would, I would find them. They would be like, you know, in, in, in couches or they'd be inside clothing or something like that. Okay. I'd find it and bring it in and they're, and they wouldn't let me use it again. Cause they had like deactivated. They didn't have the technology right. to reactivate a card. So it's kind of their fault for not being able to reactivate a card. I would love to support you in this, but uh, you got nothing. Jackie, well, the show's not on the air anymore. So you can support <laughs> me, okay? There's no, you don't lose anything by taking my side. <laughs> you are correct. It's true. That doesn't cost me anything except for my integrity. How about that? Jackie, please. Yes. All You've right. been in show business you... 35 years, please. I don't have any integrity. You. You're right. Uh, that's Lewis Lee likes to say to me, what you have, you have, t you have time for pride <laughs> anyway. So, um, I will say this, there was a child. Did you see my story that I, I saw a little bit, but I'm like, she's going to tell about, I didn't get into it. Cause I wanted to. Yeah, well, I just, I last night, first show Saturday, first show. Mm -hmm. Um, I am talking to Brandon about, uh, one of the managers, and um because they got me a happy meal of uh captain marvel it's pretty great hey anyway okay um a toy i know that's so to you so i am happy that for was you. That's, it's, well, yes you are a better person so <laughs> the um the all of a sudden i see the door guy seating a mother and child the child is five years old or a very small six on a on a saturday like show seven o'clock yeah okay. and so i say to brandon do what what is that and he goes i don't know what that is that's why is there's a child and uh so i walk over to the mom and i say you know that this is an adult sport and she's like he's listened to all of your albums he loves you <laughs> <laughs> i was like what do you mean he's listened to which what did he like the best did has he read uh, yeah, I don't, does he read romance novels? What's his jam? And, um, so I, I, I'm like, well, is he an, I guess he'll leave an old soul then. <laughs> and, um, clearly the mother loves you and the child has listened through osmosis or the child has found you independently and dragged his mother to your show. 
at four. And I will say this because then I introduced myself yeah. to the child. Yes. And I just said, hi, uh, I'm Jackie. And he's, I said, what's your name? And he goes, my name's Rev. And uh, I was like, who names the kid Rev? <laughs> but okay. Uh, and, uh, and I thought, well, that's, that should be enough. He, I mean, if he is a fan, he would recognize my voice. Is it short for Reverend? Is this a, was this a Episcopal? Uh, welcome to Minnesota. Who's naming their kid Reverend? Uh, and maybe it was Reb or maybe it was Rebel. Ralph. Wow. But it was, it sounded like Reb. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, well, I guess you'll last as long as you last. And then, of course, they didn't come up to me after the show. So I was like, well, clearly, you know, I've sold out. Did they buy merch? They um, didn't buy any merch or anything? <laughs> they didn't buy wow. any. No, I think, you know, it was 7 o'clock when it started. I didn't get up until, what, 7.45? Right. And I got off at 8.45. So. That's a long night for I that mean, kid. That's a long night for that kid. So I'm sure he lasted as long as he could last. Probably through my, you know, my, I'm, uh, you want to hear about what murder is? And then me describing a murder. Yeah. I mean, how many juice boxes did they sell though that night? That must have been <laughs> for the bar. Juice box humor. Love it. <laughs> um, so the first two nights, Wednesday, Thursday, I did not sell any hats. I was uh, very devastated because I, I think as we know, we have 500 hats, <laughs> but it is, uh, but they are there. It's, it's 80 degrees right, right. now in Minneapolis. They don't want to think about winter. <laughs> so by Friday first show, I was actually saying, I know you don't want to think about winter, but buy a fucking hat. <laughs> and then, so I sold 30 hats total. Uh, yeah. Over Friday, Saturday. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then I sold 30 shirts, and I sold a dozen coins. Holy shit. So, Hold on. Let me just yeah. do the math here. <laughs> just... the, the coins are 20. Jeez. Everything else is 30. Jackie? Fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a low-paying headline week, or a middling Seriously? headline. I'm, uh, but it was, um, was good. And then Kylie brought, he's, I asked Kylie if he had any merch, and he was like, I have an old CD. And I said, well, bring them. I mean, it's walking around money, right? And he ended up selling like, he said, I sold, a, what did he say to me first show yesterday? He said, I sold four CDs, Jackie. No one's ever sold four pieces of merch. Right? <laughs> That's got to be a new, a new record, right? <laughs> Jackie, it's the uh, it's the Armenian uh, Irish clash. He can't believe that you anyone would purchase four things, and you can't believe they wouldn't purchase <laughs> all of them. Yes, right. Yeah, and and uh, Anna Valenzuela was selling stickers and buttons and stuff, and we went to we went to Target because Kylie's charger died. Mm -hmm. A great road story where comics go to a Target, mm -hmm. and um. So they also had on sale a Day of the Dead, like little shrine thing. I saw Coco. I know what's going on. And uh, so she bought that and she used it as the display for her, for her stickers. And, stuff. and I, th I think it helps. Sales yeah, I bet it first. did. I bet it did. That seems uh, where did you work? I week. was all over the place. I was at uh, I, w I was at um, the West Side, Oino Vino. Um, tonight, tonight and uh, Friday, I was at the Glendale Room. I had two shows at the Glendale Room this week. What a what a fun oh, wow. what a fun little room. That is. Um, room. I had other. I was at the Manor. Um, I was just hopping around town, Jackie. Flappers, you were. That is amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a fun week at home. I, you know, saw two. My son had some games. Uh, he he made like the local newspaper. They yes, he did. The, uh, I mean, it's like <laughs> Burbank Press or whatever. Yeah, so they they he gave like a total sports ball. Uh, uh, we underestimated him, but then the, we came back. And <laughs> like, what are you, Tom Brady? <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, he saw field, uh, not Field of Dreams. What's the other Kevin Costner baseball one? Um, oh. Not no small affair. I forget what it was, Wait, but the actual no, the, that's. 
that's oh, no, I, know that's you're about. I know you're talking about it's the one with Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins where well, it, that's it started fucking that's yep. all we need to know yep. thank you Bull yes. Durham thank right. you and uh but that's where it was where uh he teaches Tim Robbins how to how to talk to the press yeah right right, right. and I wonder if your son has seen Bull Durham he has not oh <laughs> uh I watched John Wick 2 on the, I watched Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle first. And then, uh, cause that's what, it stops the voices. And then I watched. You're on Delta the second. Right yeah. yeah. Oh, we could talk about Delta. Oh, I bet you're second. pissed. I bet, uh, all the Delta people I follow on Twitter are outraged by the new rules about being allowed into the lounge, Jackie. It's more than that. They're, uh, allow me to say two horrible words in capitalism. They're simplifying the program. Oh, boy. That's three yes. words. Anyway, Thanks but uh, guess what happens when they simplify the program? You get uh, people on the low end get fucked. Yes. And people on the high end uh, don't feel a thing. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> um, what... Let's talk about the Delta thing first. Here's here's what's happened. I even looked up what the points guy, because Delta is so proud of how, like, the p- podcaster, blogger people have, they love Delta. Right. And Delta continues to be, it is the most comfortable flight, right? Yeah. Uh, a- airline that I fly on. I do, en- I don't, I I do like Southwest uh, just because I like how casual it is. And if I plan ahead enough, it is reasonably priced and I can sit, you know, I can sit in an exit row, but whatever. But, um, we're good. There's helicopters. I hope you can't I hear can. them. There we go. Good. The, uh, uh, what they're changing is you still get frequent flyer miles and you could use your frequent flyer miles to get free flights. You can't, it, it will never affect again unless they backpedal and they might because of how mad everyone is, uh, what your status is. Silver, gold, platinum, diamond, right? No longer has anything to do with how many miles you fly. Oh. It only has how much money you spend oh. on your ticket. So if you spend $75,000 a year, you could be diamond. Wow. So you- Guess who isn't doing right. that? Almost everyone. Right, right. And now, with those levels, you got... And with the credit card that costs six fifty a, a year, the Delta American Express, which I I bought, or I I because it is it used to just be five hundred, but it went up um, because of how much luggage costs, and I bring so much merch, it does pay for itself because it's fifty bucks a, a bag right? right to fly. Is it Jesus? The other yeah. ones are like thirty. Delta's expensive. Yeah. It is expensive, but um, I get I get two free bags, and um, and so two bags, six hundred fifty dollars. Fifty divide that into fifty. Someone can do the math. You guys can. Yeah. So uh, so it's worthwhile. So if they don't, they don't seem to be getting rid of that. But my credit card will no longer get me into the Sky Club like it did. That sucks. Or wait a minute. It will, but I get this. I only get 10 a year. Wow. That's like two months. Yeah. So you you were in the Sky Club a lot. You always talk about it. Yeah. I was in the Sky Club, both of them. Well, no, not both of them. I I was in uh, the one in Minneapolis today. And I think their biggest problem is, is that they, the booze is free in the Sky Club. Yeah, that's a problem. That's like being, yeah, that's that, like everyone's expensive. a comic at, at, a, at a comedy club, you know, that they're working. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, why not just not piss everybody off and charge for booze unless you're, you have a certain status. Right. Right. Or, or do something else. Just right. Make more, more clubs. Yeah. They and they have they have opened up. Uh, there's and the weird thing is, is the new club that they opened in in L.A. It has like a second buffet bar that has like shrimp cocktail and soft ice cream, and you're like, okay, you guys are losing your goddamn minds. I'm here for an hour and a half. I need a cup of coffee, maybe a donut. I don't need 
a charcuterie board and some caviar. I don't, this it's, I, I would love a charcuterie board and some caviar. No. Um, I, I will say that, um, I mean, I, you know how I love the sky club. I mean, oh, yeah. Jackie, I was, please. I, 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 I I actually have been trying to figure out where that old bit that I was going to put on staycation when it was going to be called altercation, with the, with the sky the club story and the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause I don't remember the story anymore and I'd hate to do it and then have some, um, actually tell me that I was wrong about my own story. <laughs> and plus it was funny as it was. So, um, well, I have been, I finally am mosaic on JetBlue. Oh, is that like diamond? I don't know. You know, is that the highest? It's, no, I mean, there's levels of mosaic, but it takes a while. But uh, I guess I get some perks. I'm gonna, I'll be delving into okay. it on my next JetBlue flight and see what I get. Yeah, yeah. I know. I've already gotten uh, one perk of a guy jerking off next to me. So I sat next to a guy who was easily six eight. Ooh. Uh, middle seat, exit row. Yeah. Uh, on Delta to the, this very day and he didn't want to get up and let me pass him and I didn't want to because you know the exit row is slightly wide right, right, right. and I could have squoze by him but I might have clocked him in the brain box with my backpack so I was like can you I, I'm sitting there against the window and he just looked at me uh, like the Sasquatch that he was no offense we mean everyone well <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, right. And uh, and he just looked at me and I said, can you move? And he goes, and he, he gestured to the, to the expanse. Oh my God. And I just said, just move. <laughs> and he Fuck stood up yeah. and moved. And I walked past him and I said, look, it's over. <laughs> and then I sat down. I love it. And uh, <laughs> there's a reason I wear my headphones. You guys. <laughs> I'm not always... Uh, it's an illusion that I'm I'm as nice as I. Oh, I I never um, I never. Oh, well, you that. yeah, you never fell for it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on the plane, uh, so I watched Welcome to the Jungle, Jumanji, mm -hmm. and then there was another hour, and so I decided to try John Wick two because I've only seen John Wick one, and I heard that they they t it takes place right after each one takes place right after the previous movie. They're great. They're so. Fun. My kid loves it. Oh, my God. It made me laugh so hard. But what I noticed mostly in the 45 minutes that I got to watch of John Wick 2 was that every person that he hadn't seen in 6 to 11 years that would come into the into frame, <laughs> he would go, well, hello, Luis. <laughs> oh, hi, Amy. He would immediately remember their names. Oh, I was like, oh, it was you, just, right? it was offense. It literally made me feel less than right. And he's our age too, so there's no reason. He's <laughs> and I don't even know if it's age or just self-absorption. We don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, we may never know. Um, but uh, well, Jackie, I when I came home on Monday, so I was in Telluride, right? Oh, right. So Monday, I get up early in the morning, and uh, I I took the gondola up to the San Sofia Peak, which is above Telluride. It's incredible. So then I walked a little bit on a path and I did my little morning way page, uh, artist way morning pages. Right. And then I just walked for a little bit. And then, uh, Adam, Kate and Holland, who was one of the other comics on the, on the lineup has this really funny bit about a guy telling him when you're out hiking, just remember a mountain lion is always watching you. And I, <laughs> and I wait, and it came into my head and I got Ooh. real, real <laughs> Real self-conscious. <laughs> did you write about it in your morning page? I don't think so. I, I didn't know. You, I didn't know you did the morning. Oh page. yeah, how I long do. have you been doing? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a great victory. Today was not one, but when I can just start and I just keep writing for like it's like twenty minutes if I don't if I don't stop to think about stuff. But like on Sundays or days where I don't have anything to do, I start you know planning things, and then there's twenty minutes. It will take like two or three hours because I start daydreaming, or I just make other notes for other things, and right, it's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, I um, did you have any oxygen problems? I didn't. Right? No, but you know, oh, you know what happened? So the van picks me up for my flight. I have like a three fifteen flight out of Grand Junction, so it's like a two hour drive, two okay. to three. 
they tell me, but two and a half maybe. So we're like 15 minutes out of town and the van driver gets a call and they say, oh, you got to go back and pick up a group of eight. I was like, what? No, there's no way. We're not going to make it. We go back and eight people. How long is it going to take to load eight people into this van? And they have to be, they have to be dropped off at a different airport that's on the way. I'm like, no, I'm going to be stranded here. So I'm like yelling from the back. No, you can't do this. (laughs) And then I ended up buying a ticket they they will reimburse me for it, but they haven't yet from this other airport that they took the van to. But um, yeah, I was oh like, gosh. I was like, oh, I'm just going to be standing. So you got hijacked. Yeah. You got, you got kidnapped and taken yes. uh, and had to ride with drummers. When? <laughs> no, it was actually a, a cool band called the Men of Zion, which I, and I enjoy being in the ride with them. Uh, but I'm just saying it was very, uh, I was like, I, I've been away from my kid too long. He's going to start doing meth because his mother's not there. <laughs> There's a fentanyl crisis. There is. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so that was a little bit of drama, but I got home. Okay. Oh, on Monday. It. Hey, let's take a break okay. if we could. And then let's talk about the comic of the week, oh, ladies and germs. Again, this this gal popped up on my Instagram and I just started watching. So funny. Maddie T. Weiner or Weiner? Uh, right. It might be Weiner. We're, we're going to go with Weiner until she tells us differently. Okay. Uh, yeah. I watched a couple of her reels. She's clearly working at the cellar. Yeah. Um, really funny. Yeah, very. Just very smart. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> she had some stuff about weight. But it's it. really hard to do stuff yes. about being heavy. Yes. And. It was, and she does it really fun. well, and it's nothing I've heard before. It, oh, it's right. great. Love it. Love it. Love it. Mad, yes. Wiener. How do you, um, is it M A D D I E T W E I N E R, right? I E N E R. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it might be Weiner. So Maddie, D D, like David, T is in Tom. Super funny. Uh, Weiner, W I E N E R. Very funny. Yeah. Instagram. Figure it out. She's in the notes. Try to book her. Try to find her. Try to throw some cash at her. Well, hey, excuse me. The, the writer strike ended, so try to book me. How about that? All those, all those SNL Wait, writers that are canceling their weeks, fucking give them to me, motherfuckers, please. Okay. Do you think that they'll go? Well, yeah, there was talk, right? There was talk that it's that that the agreements were made, no, they but did. just WGA. Not- they made, yeah, the WGA a temp agreement with the WGA. Yes. Right, and so, but not SAG. And uh, but once you, but once you guys have, have won the battles, hopefully SAG can just go us too, please. SAG has uh, even more issues than we did. And we had a lot. So I, uh, okay. but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, it's from what the email that we got, it's like, they're very happy with what they got the writers. Okay. And uh, so that's good. And I mean, right, but and how long will that take to ratify? Like, will 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 members well, have to I ratify? Think we have to vote on it, yeah. But uh, I don't, you know, everyone wants this to be over so fucking badly, um, right? And uh, right, and I I I want all those writers to cancel their weeks, and then I somehow get a lot of work. Yeah, we're here. That they thought it was going to go till November, yeah. but it's not. It's not. So we're available. <laughs> maybe maybe your October weeks, I could cover that for you. Anybody got a, anybody got anything? Yep. Um, there's drama. There was drama in, um, on Twitter today on this weekend. on Twitter. <laughs> there was drama at the, well, we heard randomly from a couple of different comics. Cause I checked in with others, uh, for the, the Montana comedy festival. There was some guy who did one of those get drunk and then do stand up shows. Have you ever done those? Um, I don't get drunk. So what did you get high and do stand up? Well, There's I also those. did once it was accidental. I, I took a, it was the first time I had a gummy and I had the whole thing and apparently I should have had like a fourth of it. And then I performed at the stand. I don't remember any of it, but, um, no, but it wasn't the theme. No, I haven't done the thing that you, when you participate in a show, yeah. yeah, like Funches and and Carm like like people who like to smoke pot and do you know there's there's right. comedy under the influence or something or right. or weed hilarity or whatever yeah and then other better names right uh yeah 
accidentally getting drunk and doing stand-up comedy that defines uh 19 <laughs> so uh <laughs> that was but um yeah so there was one of those shows at some comedy festival and some guy he was like it was supposed to be like uh it it, it was i don't think it was supposed to be an insult yeah but then it ended up he ended up just doing a bunch of racial slurs and Sounds then the like next him. day <laughs> i've known that guy a while sounds like him oh really because i didn't know who that was oh no i yeah i remember him from yeah yeah from back in the day uh, back in some days i've i've lived many days jackie but i back in one of my days okay and um the fact that he has a determiner on the beginning of his name is weird to me well, now you're and then people, but yeah um <laughs> I'm, yeah i'm willing yeah. to help people but uh because he sounds like a real mm. oh is it that yeah. oh okay yeah oh and then um yeah it just it felt like it felt like uh i looked him up and then i saw something rob remember rob just basic his name doesn't matter but he posted that the guy who played mall cop might have i think Kevin he was James. kidding Right? Was he kidding that the guy Kevin who played James. Paul, whatever? Kevin James. He is the titular Paul Blart. Not, was Kevin James in the movie Mall, Mall Cop? Yes. <laughs> Paul Blart, right? Jackie, are you under the influence okay. right now? Am I? I am slightly punchy. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create some gossip that didn't exist. So uh, what I'm going to do is completely undo and let you... Take the reins here for a second, well, Jim Martin. You go for this it. This was fun. So uh, <laughs> this week, Jimmy Carr, who I don't know, <laughs> but I think he's funny. He's a one-liner guy. I mean, you love it or you he don't used love to, it. He used to be, right, and he used to be sort of a real likable one-liner guy, and then he tried to become an edge lord about three or four I years ago, I don't know ago, what right? he did. I don't know. I haven't been tracking him. The only the only British comics I trust right now are Sarah Milliken and uh, Stuart Lee. All right. So I don't track the others, uh, but they pop up on my radar when they're accused of rape or they put out a terrible um, teaser. But this is so this was so great. I, I don't know. I still don't know if this is maybe I'm giving him too much credit. So he he puts out a teaser for his um, Netflix special and the 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 little sentence up that precedes the clip is I put my American audience to the test with a selection of my darkest jokes. Right. right you're and right then it's like, Oh, he wants to get dunked on. Cause that you wouldn't say that unless you're hoping to, to me. That's such a troll. Right. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. And, and that's sort of his dynamic with the audience is boo. Hey, you know, boo, love, boo, love. So to me, I'm like, Oh, he's probably doing that on purpose. And yeah. then, but the so, jokes that were in like this clip were clip. not dark. Like some of the things he referred what? to were serious. Well, yeah, but it wasn't like a super clever. Right. Right. It, it just wasn't, it didn't, th that setup, you were waiting to bash him. And then he gave you he was some weak jokes. Crushed. And it was like was smushed from uh, all sides. crazy. And if you, if you read the quote said, in all languages uh just just completely yeah he was dunked on hardcore but i will say <laughs> <I've>... hardcore <laughs> nobody no i would i read a lot of them nobody was sticking enough for him they're all like this is what this is it was that's where he got the jokes <laughs> i know i'm sorry. That's what it, some of them felt like. I'm like, what? It was just like an Uber, like Tim Heidecker, uh, Tim and Eric J commentary on comedy, or is this real? I that's I, I couldn't tell. That. I actually thought it was I commentary mean, on American that, audiences. Okay. You know, like he was so deliberately trying to. I, I posted that. this. I, I don't know if you read it because I t said that I was supposed to save it for the. So I was at J. I, I well UCB probably. A dozen years ago, when I did last comic standing last time, oh, I did. Um, I'm at UCB a dozen years ago. Louis C.K. is at Louis, uh, UCB. Yeah, and Louis C.K. unprompted sees me and he's like, "I saw your last comic standing. You're a real comedian." And I was weirdly flattered 
confused, oh, slightly offended. Thanks, Jackie. And then, yes, and I, went the whole, I went the whole day. And male comic. I was flattered, but you. confused, Congrats. slightly offended. Uh, <laughs> fast forward to probably six years ago, I was at JFL, and Jimmy Carr comes up to me after his show and says, you're a real comic. And I was like, I don't understand. I mean, the, I know that they thought they were being flattering, <sighs> but it was so <laughs> not <laughs> flattering, like just sort of confusing. Yeah. And so by that time, I knew that uh, whoever would say such a thing was not my ally. It so I just did sort of an eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> no. It makes you go, what, what, what did you think of me before you saw a set? And did a set convince you? Like, think, or did, and do you think yeah, that of all female like comics, but we all have to prove women. ourselves to you? Do you say that to guys? I don't know. So I think it's a, an updated uh, version like of your, uh, yeah. finally a funny woman or your, I don't like female comics. I right, love you. It it's one of those, flat, but it's, it's, you know, it's a little, it's, a, it's, a it's harder to it's a track because uh, you're getting older. It certainly doesn't feel like a step forward when you look at it from a certain angle. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Anyway, well, he, um, <laughs> it's, it's no, just I'm interesting to watch. I think his yeah. special will do really well. I think he probably doesn't give a shit. And I think he won't. And I'm sure as soon as he steps on stage, he'll be, it's Lee. like, that's the famous guy. And he'll, I he's funny. He'll do a good Lee. job and it won't matter. Cause Stuart but Lee, it was, yeah. What? Are you, are you dead? I'm, I'm do you know him? Are you, no are you on PM? <laughs> oh, wow. You're in, but wow. You're a real comic, I, Jackie. We you know, Stuart friends Lee. if we hung out more. And we just hung out. We, okay. We're just on the road together for a long time, a long time ago. He name right. checks you on so one of his records. It's me occasionally. It was there was terrorism in London, and I emailed him wow. after <laughs> it happened, and I said, "Are you uh, just checking in? Are you okay?" And he on his album he goes, "I woke up to so many emails and phone messages. Are you okay?" And all I could think was, "How did they know I was depressed?" <laughs> 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 and that it was better than that. It wasn't even that. I yeah. it perfectly. Stuart Lee, you guys find him. Stuart with a W. Yeah. Yes, he's great. Big numbers. Um, yeah, so I'm sure his uh, Jimmy Carr special will do really well. Big numbers. Even if it's a hate watch, people are like, this fucking piece of shit. Um, Let me see if the whole hour is so like this. Well, guess what? Kitching. My, my hour. Mm -hmm. despite the exhaustion that I literally, I was like, despite all of your tired. lunches, I, I don't know. I may have to uh, see a medical professional. Uh, Cause I have uh, just, I have a health concern about my throat. Remember when Jen Kirkman had that throat thing and then she wouldn't talk for right. eight months except for to do stand up randomly. Uh, I'm, I, I am a fear yes. that it's that it better not be that. Cause uh, yeah. This is, a, this is a big portion of my income, turns out, uh, the talking. Um, yeah, that would be horrible. Yeah. I think, didn't Dana Gould go through I'm that as well? Was it polyps on the I vocal cords? Or? My doctor is lame. So I'm thinking of actually paying for an ear, nose, and throat guy that Chris, my mom-in-law, went to. I'm thinking of just paying out of pocket and going to that guy. Because when I met him, when she, he did her ears, mm -hmm. I freaking fell in love with that guy. I was like, "What a what a great doctor!" Mm -hmm. Wow, Jackie! All we have to do is make it to sixty five, well, and then we're on Medicare, and we get all those doctors. Like your my mom doctor. had great doctors. Your she mother. That's why she has the great. Yeah. Oh, so that's not a Medicare. Oh, I see. Right. 
Jackie, also, I read that the city of Los Angeles, one out of every six jobs is vacant. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if we Maybe do I'll need to get in there and get some like, calipers at the last um, minute when we turn some or something. Brian joke about some cousin of his working at the DMV. Who knows? Funny. Why not um, at this point? Uh, yeah. Very, he's great. He has a great dry bar special as well. Right. He's just, really funny. He's really clean. He's a really great joke happy. writer. You guys like, should check out Brian my Kiley. Came on Wednesday, and she was like, "I thought the joke was over, and then it wasn't." <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's the perfect joke." <laughs> and, and yeah, I great. did what I'm calling my new poop joke, but I need to start totally, calling it my new totally. poop joke uh, because. <laughs> That's not gonna get me work either. That's not gonna. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's more about. But I mean, to explain it as a marriage no. communication joke really doesn't sell it either. So I don't know what to call it. But uh, I'll... well, when I refer to it, in well, the you know, it's only for your notebook that you even have to name a joke. What are you worried about? <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I see. Um, I finished the teaser for my special. Right. Um, yeah. I hired uh, I hired someone to do some different music. <laughs> uh, the one they sent me had the Comedy Central dun, 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 that old guitar riff that from two thousand and two. It reminded me of t- tough crowd like commercial breaks. I was like, I need. Yeah. And so. I just hired someone to make a cute little <laughs> right. little jazzy right. sort of like I just wanted to sound like an adult comedy special, <laughs> please. Okay. So yeah, it's done, and uh, uh, I guess mm-hmm. they're trying to sell it. And if they don't sell it, it'll go right to their right. YouTube channel. But it's weird. Like I just heard Todd Barry on Marin talking. He's having. So he wasn't you. able to sell yes, his. Continue. Todd Barry's fucking hilarious. And, uh, yeah, but I just mean like it, like it's, I guess like about two years ago, it would have been so embarrassing. Right. Like I can't sell my special, but get this. So many Chad funny Daniels people can't, it's, it's beyond it's funny. It's, uh, it's beyond the comedy part completely. <laughs> right. If golfing doesn't <laughs> fix it. Wow. What, it's, what, what's you know what the industry's done? It really is. Yes, I believe. I believe so. Wait. Yeah. He so the one he did with 800 pounds? Kyle, Kyle Kinane, what the fuck? Uh, hired, it, it has a new special going to come out. Oh, I see. But you know, with 800 pounds. Get this. So um, he, t- he tipped out the staff. Kyle Kinane probably doesn't want me to tell you this, but the staff was. Is it going to YouTube? You know, around with the staff afterwards. And they talked about the comics they liked and the comics they don't like and whatever. And they were talking about how much they loved Kyle Kadane and how funny he was and everything. And they shot it. He shot it at Acme. But he also, he didn't want, they only shot two shows, first and second show Saturday, right? And he didn't want them to serve drinks during his set so that it was all focused, right? And so I guess he was talking, you know, and with with the staff. And they, you know, he realized that it was going to cost them money. Because they weren't going to sell drinks, they weren't going to get tipped, so he tipped them out. Right, right, right. Yeah, and um, yeah. So, nice. That's cool. Now, yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought you were going to say he tips at every. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. But I, I was like, good. Yeah, he can't. If he tips that much every time he does a week. Uh, I, right, wait, right. What is, that would be a Canine and Holdings Hedge no, Hedge so Fund Company. Money. Like what so, the fuck? <laughs> right, but that was when he was shooting a special, so yes. that's what he did it for. Dude. Yeah. So, wow. like, I tipped out the sure. staff. That's, and a, that's a yeah, yeah. It's a it's money a, a, a tiny fraction. I, I asked the manager. So how do you how do you disperse that? Do you just give an envelope and say everyone and grab it? I, I since I if I try with my face recognition mm-hmm. issues, I would give some people two ten dollar bills and other people none. So I just give it to the manager and go, Can you please uh, just tell everybody I'm buying them a cup of coffee? Yeah. 
I'm making okay money off of merch. Yeah, right? Jackie, I made two grand you off are of making and tons so, of money off of merch. That was, uh, that was huge. Somebody told me, I think I told this story last week, is that well, their feature made 15 grand in 11 nights off of merch. And I was like, there's not enough merch. To like drop shipping, we talked about drop shipping. Oh yeah, you told me that last week. But um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, right, I'm right. not in Just, uh, tipping the yeah tipping out the um, staff categories. Yeah, I mean, I feel guilty. I wish I was. I would love to. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. You tip the. I mean, I tip, can I get a meal, you know, like directly, if I get a meal? Staff and all yes. the, you're not a monster. And, uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No. No. Kathleen Madigan told but me. But now I feel like a monster. And, and Are all headliners I doing this? Do all the things that Kathleen Madigan okay. does because she makes a great deal of money and is beloved well, and is also really, really funny. So I thought she was a good role model. And so I was like, you got anything, anything else you're doing? Like Brian yes, Regan she does. Brushes his teeth after his set. She's I'd great role model. Get to yeah. do that. If I'd remember to bring my fucking toothbrush, it would help. No, just after his shows. Before he does a meet, any sort of meet and greet. Between shows, you mean? Like if he's, he's doing two America shows? Stand -up comedy. Yeah. So. Oh. That's, I mean, yeah, uh, I do before, too. like if I eat, I will brush yeah. my teeth before I go up on stage. I, you guys want to take a second break? Note, you don't want food flying at you. Let's take a second break. Unless you do. Okay. Okay. So I just want to say that working at Acme, it's my home club. I love it so much. And it's like when you do the punch, right? And... I'm yeah. just, I'm loose. I can try right. whatever I want. I can, I can yeah. get to the punchline. I can sort of leave stories hanging. I can pull stuff right. from the ether. And it was so helpful. Like my, the, my new driving bit with, I turned it in and, and the made of bees bit and the, I, I integrated them and it's, and I can't wait to get, I, I should have recorded on my phone. Like, you probably do every time, and I sometimes do, but don't often enough. Um, but I got lazy because I knew that the club would send me copies. And so I can't wait to get copies because Thursday, my, uh, you know, Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. first shows, always great, fine. Uh, Thursday show, I did all of the jokes in order, and I hit all the beats. So as opposed to the rest of the weekend, where I would start one one bit, I yes. would weave it. I was like, oh, I kind of, and then I would go off. And so I would miss a couple of the beats, but I would come up with, like, you're just wilding, coming up with new lines. So I have to, yeah. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to actually to seeing and or listening to those sets. That's uh, very exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm coming along on stuff, you know, I feel like, it's, like one bit I worked on. All right. I'm like, that one's done. And, uh, and now I'm kind of rooting around this other one and it's going in a different direction than I thought, but it's like, okay, yeah. let's just see yeah. what's happening here. But, uh, okay. I've been, yeah. You get a March working on my pilot or whatever. So my brain's a little split, but, uh. Right. Of, no, we don't have, we're not picketing anymore. I mean, we can pick it so for SAG and show up it's now SAG's alone out there. Um, so I'll probably okay. jump in. And... No, the WGA is not picketing yeah. any longer, but we can, we should, and I will uh, join SAG if it's you're alone out there. Um, right, right. But uh, sorry, yeah, and uh, no, there was going to be no picket uh, anyway tomorrow because of young, young before, so. And yeah, so Does this it? week yeah. I think uh, right. I'm going to record. Right. I've got a backlog of people who want to do Dork Forests. And Dave Hill has a new album coming out. And I love Dave Hill. Uh, Dave Hill, uh, he wrote the music for Looking Back, the 10 minute special about 
uh, car jokes that I tell into the ass camera of Kyle Clark's uh, Mazda. So. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be in New York on the 6th and 7th of October. What do you I will be in um, Cincinnati the weekend after that, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, at Go Bananas. We'll be in Austin uh, November 9th, 10th, and 11th. November 9th, we're doing a live podcast. And then the 10th and 11th, right. we're doing, you know, like right. I should, stand up. We're to like co headlining or whatever. Some tickets. Like if you buy uh, a yeah. So you can go to the stand up if you just pay slightly more or something like that. Yeah, if you go to the pod, uh, you can go to the Austin, other. Texas, you should come and see the live pod and then come and see us do stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have, uh, we're working on merch and um, Max Fun. Yeah. It'll be on the Max Fun store. And that'll be, that'll be really cool. Yeah, we have cool um, stuff. Yeah. When I wore my Kills Like a, Kills like a Guy t shirt on, a, nice. on my Alaska that Airlines flight, the, I, uh, I think I said it was already the flight attendants. Like, I, I know like that I have a bunch of, um, sort of yeah like i'm doing the crow on thursday are you all right and then um i am doing the crow with you on thursday i have to pick up some sets mm -hmm. because that's the only set i've got <laughs> yeah that's not gonna cut it yeah so maybe uh and i might do a zoom oh yeah what the heck that's, that's fun yes oh yeah Oh, you know what? I was thinking we um, should do a Patreon Zoom pretty soon. Yeah, let's try Flash to do Max that Fun this, uh, Zoom. The week of the 25th, I was going to ask you about that. Can I try to do that yeah, this week? I think. Yeah. Um, and then October 1. So we'll let's mm -hmm. look at our calendar. People tune in to our various uh, things. <laughs> yes. And if you're a Patreon, we, we thank as you. Is, and if you aren't, you know, I mean, and there's always, we we're always so, accepting new people. The and at the and five level, email, uh, you get, yes. Yes. Yeah, you guys all know, and you'll have plenty God, of time, Mark and we'll, it'll be you, me, and, you know, we'll get some, round up some people, some the usual suspects. And, uh, <laughs> Does. <laughs> Very funny. Like they know about just it. To remind, just to let everybody know, uh, we all do stand up. Uh, so, but yeah, my next big run is with Maria, um, and it's not till I believe the third week of yeah, I'm in town until like October 17th or 18th, because that I'm doing Philly, uh, is it Philly, Pittsburgh, and Chicago, with Maria. Oh right, right, right. What I okay. So, oh, can you tell us? Uh, can you tell us the chains, gossip? One of the big chains about the one, and uh, so do you, do you, are you comics who do door okay. deals, which is not you and I okay. mostly, right? And especially in the big chains, uh, those the they do, um, right? They they do a seventy thirty split, and that chain has decided that it has to be a fifty fifty split now. So all the people at that uh, company uh, have canceled their weeks. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're both available, <gasps> uh, but they're going to TikTok. They want this uh, lady is available. Balloon angles. So um, it's uh, we're not getting work out of it. But yeah. uh, and here's your hint as to who this they is. They want comedians. Is, they uh, want yeah. This same chain. They also own essentially the Ticketmaster for stand-up comedy, and um, ru <laughs> rumor has it, and I, you know, I I would like a second source on this, is that when they know that the tickets are going to sell out, they bump an extra fee on top. So it's capitalism at its finest, you guys. Whatever the market will bear. Oh. So hmm. when uh, you know Ralphie May plays it. Uh, they know he'll sell out because he's dead, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone would really. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say. Jeff. 
One of the not only do you not know names or faces, you don't know obituaries. He's got to be in his late twenties, but he's very handsome. He's a handsome Malcolm. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, I said mm-hmm. to Lewis, Marcus, kind of as handsome as Derek was. In Malcolm, that's right. Yeah, uh, it's too bad Louis Anderson isn't around so we could find out if he was really that handsome. Because uh, famously, Louis Anderson hit on Derek pretty hard, and Derek uh, came real close to getting pretty <laughs> sweaty. Uh, so, just uh, presence. Uh, Louis Anderson was he was very smitten with Derek. What do you mean? Nobody was willing. Oh to yeah, I. Out and he, okay, like, he and Derek uh, did not reciprocate. <laughs> so, right. well, I I never did, but um, I mean, I I encouraged. Think everybody we've to all done drinks, that. But we've all done. Here's the thing: if you started buying me drinks, I became an irritant. <laughs> 